What it do, homies? It's your boy Dave, and I'm back today. We back here with some more Jonathan Young. This time we checking out his cover of We Don't Talk About Bruno, but it is cursed. And honestly, man, what else do I expect from Jonathan Young, man? If anybody's going to do a cursed version, it's definitely him. I'm feeling like we're going to get some deep dragon breath, thunder break type breath singing right here bro i it would be really cool if this song was like all in bass and whatnot which would be a little bit difficult because some people start in like a lower register when they sing uh but you know jonathan young's a vocal range uh, knows no depth so <laughs> i wouldn't put him past him anyways we're already being creeped out by this thumbnail and of course this is dimmed a little bit you see how the eyes are kind of poking out at us yeah it's already creepy so let's go ahead and shut up and turn it up Oh, Caleb's in here too. And a pen too. I don't think I know who that is. <laughs> okay. I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, uh when um Jonathan Young did his arcane, you know, cover the one, the one he most recently did and everything. And of course, part of that was just like his facial expressions. And of course, he threw in that camera shake, which definitely just made the song even more epic. I mean, if he wasn't shaking that camera, I would have been shaking my head because of how much aggression he was putting in there. But listening to him sing. Right. And the way that he's talking kind of reminds me of that, of uh, that, uh, what's his name, that bishop off of uh, Notre Dame. Right. You, you, you guys know what I'm talking about, how they kind of just talk with like this type of this type of accent or whatnot. And now I'm starting here sitting here thinking about the type of faces <laughs> that all three of them are making when they're singing this, because there's no way you're singing this with just a straight face. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, um, from what I can hear in these 22 seconds, I think most of what's going to make this curse outside of their singing ability is going to be the mixing as well. I already started to hear some panning and everything. That's really about to start sending some shivers up our spines, giving us them goosebumps, them R.L. Stein kind of vibes. OK, let's keep it moving. Dude, that grit. Yo, okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. And I, I honestly kind of love it that he took this direction, right? Because it allows him to be just this maximum amount of creativity, right? So you sit here and you have the music in front of you, and you think about all these musical elements. I'm probably, I'm pretty sure that both of them, all three of them, probably had this song on repeat and repeat and repeat, trying to figure out what kind of elements can they replace to really try to dive in this whole creepy type of feel, this whole cursed type of feel. And of course, whenever we're talking about something that's cursed or creepy or in the horrific kind of fashion you know you got to put an organ in there and i believe that's what we're hearing there in the background and it's interesting right because we've all heard this song i imagine those of you who clicked on this reaction and people who uh, also seen the original we have the actual song playing in our head so i like to think that you know if um i believe uh, Jonathan composed this and everything he's kind of playing off that right so he doesn't necessarily need all of the elements to be in here he only needs kind of like one of those staple elements and stuff but you know the rest of it so he so he, he allows him more freedom to be more creative and everything so that's why I like that and then we have this part right here which from the first couple of words that I heard which obviously is the rap part but now all three of them are coming together to kind of give us like super creepy dialogue you know what I mean if you just take the music out of this and just have them perform, like just rap or not and just sing it, like it might be even more creepier if we don't have anything to reference in the background. Just the audio only, just their vocals. Uh, just a cappella. That would be creepy. <laughs> Do you understand? Do you understand? A seven foot free rats along his back 
Caleb. You know what? And, and it's kind of funny because obviously the song is a lot more lighthearted in the actual movie. But, you know, now that they turned it into something like this, it definitely could be a horror story. Bruno Mars ain't the nice guy behind the walls in this version. He's an actual monster. <laughs> Vocal performance is amazing. The mix. Interesting. Okay, okay, see, here's the thing. That part in that song is just so unbelievably light. I was really wondering how they was going to do this, right? And I was sitting there thinking, I was like, what, what, what can you do in a melody to make it sound a little bit more sinister? You know what I mean? Well, there's a couple of things you could do, but one of the things you could do is just simply pitch it down, right? Which is what it sounds like she's about to do. Because I sure was about to say, wait a minute, you know, some of that light airness, the piano and everything. We got the reverb and of course the vocal performance, which can also kind of give you that sense of like dread and everything. Um, but I believe what's happening is that they're taking it a pitch down or maybe even a couple of semitones down to really kind of drive in that horror thing. And of course we got the visuals to help and these cinematic drums as well right to go you know what i mean so okay i was really wondering how they was gonna do this Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness, man. See, it, that's what I love about covers. They just, yo. And every time I listen to the cover, that's actually a really, really nice part in the song where everybody's kind of overlapping the same stuff they sang throughout the entire song and everything. Um, but I know one thing is that you got to mix it pretty well, right? So that if I was to able, if I wanted to focus on one of theirs, I could hear that. And if I wanted to focus on another one out of the three parts, I could hear that as well. Now, of course, in the actual song, I think there's more than three people singing. So you got to choose which ones, I believe, right? Yeah, there's definitely more than three people singing. Um <laughs> all three of them right uh what, what was what was her name again and uh um and a pant and a pantsu and everything absolutely lovely voice uh jonathan young started that, that that grit and everything and he started just going up right it, it just it just kind of descended all three of them the descended into madness during that part 
And it was excellent. It was actually, I love the mix. And, you know, I'm listening to it, you know, through these like the really, really cheap headphones um, and everything. Um, but sometimes I know what to listen to when it comes to the mix, even though I don't have like a full reference or whatnot. And to me, I think it was, it was, it was wonderful. It was beautiful. And I think he did a very good job of delivering that cursed feeling um, while also at the same time attempting to kind of strip away some of that bright airiness uh, about the song. I mean, in general, the song is already kind of creepy, right? Because, you know, in the movie, he's looked at as his boogeyman and everything. But you took it a step further <laughs> and turned this into literally a Halloween song. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw this get super popular during a Halloween uh uh, during Halloween, as people start dressing up as many, many of the characters from uh, Encanto. So <laughs> that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe. Dave's out.